You know, I don't understand these Europeans. They sit down at a table and drink this like tiny little cup of coffee with like some cookie or something. It's like, why do that when you can just have your coffee with you all day long? Just bring along a cup, fill it all the way up, and uh, you're good to go. In the last episode, we were cutting hay. Today, we are gathering all of that hay that we cut and bringing it to the barn. Once we've cut grass, it takes about two to three days to dry, depending on the weather. But if you just cut a bunch of grass and leave it, the top will dry and the bottom won't. The grass kind of forms a vapor barrier trapping moisture against the ground. To get the grass to dry evenly, a tedder is used. This machine picks the grass up from the ground and kind of mixes it up and tosses it into the air. After the tether has gone through, the hay looks kind of fluffy. This breaks that moisture barrier, allowing moisture to escape from underneath. This is done one or two times a day until the grass is fully dried. During the night, dew settles on the hay, and we can't pick it up until that dew dries off. So in the morning here, we're just raking the hay, getting things ready to be picked up, and then later on we'll pick it up. This little area right here in front of the beehive is really too small to get a tractor into. Like I've talked about in previous videos, in Switzerland there isn't a lot of land to waste. We cut a lot of hard to get to places like around posts and trees and of course the steep slopes. Farmers in countries with lots of land, it's often not worth the time to cut hay in places like this. Instead, they just cut the wide open areas. Before all of this hay can be picked up by a tractor, it has to be moved to a place where a tractor can get to it. To do this, we use a combination of rakes, pitchforks, leaf blowers, and more recently, Cobblevadly got a twister. I did drink all of my coffee just doing that one little job, and now I'm out for the rest of the day. So we've got to change um, out one of these machines for a different um, head to move the hay down the hills. This is the twister. As it goes across, it picks up the hay from the ground and the conveyor belt pushes it down the hill. The twister is made from lightweight materials, but it's still quite a bit heavier than that sickle bar, making it a bit more challenging to handle. And the steeper you go, the more challenging it gets. If you notice, I'm always going across the hill or uphill where the weight is on the back wheels. If the machine starts to point downhill, even just a little bit, all of the weight shifts from the big spiked tires to the front of the machine, and you lose traction. Then things start to go downhill real fast. This is probably one of my favorite machines on the farm. On the steep slopes, it makes life so much better. And it's way faster than using a rake and a leaf blower and a pitchfork to move this hay off the bank. The styre's ready to go here. Look at that. Very nice. It's a pretty tractor. So this hay wagon is actually made right here in Switzerland, about 20 minutes from here. Um, the trailer is a separate part. You can put different attachments on it, but this upper part with the, uh, the hay wagon is all made right here. So Eric said that they picked up uh, hay yesterday. Um, let's see how much in the hayloft. Oh yeah, it's pretty hard to see, but quite a bit in there already. For the silage we made a couple episodes ago, look how much it compressed. Way down there. So I'm gonna be driving the hay crane first. When there's so much hay on the ground like there is today, it's a lot of work to keep up, so it's a little bit stress. My guess is by the end of today, we will be full all the way to the middle bar there. But we'll see, I don't know, it could even be a little bit more. Now it's time to start picking up the hay, and here there are a bunch of jobs that need to be done simultaneously. The hay first needs to be raked into windrows, then picked up with the tractor, brought to the barn, and then loaded into the hayloft. Because of the heavy dew in the mornings, there are only so many hours to get the hay picked up. Cabo Vidley is a family farm, and the whole family works together to make this happen. That is, the whole family and one American. Actually, two Americans. The John Deere is also an American, and he counts. 
Luca and Yulian are going to be running the Abbey and the Londini, raking the hay into windrows. On small fields, this can be a little bit tricky. You have to plan ahead and position the windrows in a way that the tractor picking up the hay can easily follow. David and Dominic are picking up the hay with the John Deere and the Steyr. In English, these are called loading wagons or forage wagons. They drive over the windrow, picking it up. Once at the barn, they can also unload the hay onto the floor. Cobble Vidley uses two different loading wagons. The John Deere is the biggest tractor on the farm and it's pulling the boss. The Steyr setup that you saw earlier is the tractor that's most often used on the steeper hills. This thing has six wheel drive all four tractor wheels and both trailer wheels. Really, it's a very impressive setup and we're gonna have to talk about it in more detail in a later video. While they're picking up the hay, Barbara and Eric are raking up any hay that gets left behind, as well as filling in wherever needed. And of course, I'm loading the hay into the hayloft. There's actually more going on here than just putting hay into a giant box, but I think the hayloft deserves a video all of its own. Making hay is one of the most important parts of the summer. In a colder climate like Switzerland, grass doesn't grow in the winter. So you have to store away food for your animals so they can eat. During the summer, if for whatever reason you don't gather enough, maybe the weather was too dry and the grass didn't grow, or it was a very rainy summer and you couldn't get hay to dry. For whatever reason, when the winter comes around and you don't have enough for your animals, you have to either get rid of animals or you have to buy hay. In Switzerland, hay, and especially organic hay, is very expensive. And for obvious reasons, you don't want to get rid of your animals. In the spring, when the barns are empty, there's quite a bit of stress to get them full. But in the fall, when the barns are packed full, you have some happy farmers. And this was actually a really good first cutting. And we made it just over that first bar I was talking about. If you remember back to those earlier videos when I was working in the hayloft, it really puts it in perspective. That's a lot of hay, but we're not anywhere near done yet. By the end of the summer, this barn has got to be packed full all the way to the ceiling. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.